Um, welcome, welcome to this impact event. Um, live in a virtual panopticon. Next month, uh, the Impact Festival is taking place. I think exactly in a month, it's opening. Um, you all have the, the booklet. Machines are getting smarter. Let's get smart about machines. And um, today I was, I was reading the Volkskrant about a new uh, virtual influencer. Her name is Michaela. Maybe you know her already. I didn't. I did not. But you know, if, if it's in the Volkskrant, in the paper, then you know that it's Everybody knows it already. Michaela is an online influencer. She has 1.4 million followers. She's a singer, an actress, a model, and um, a feminist as well. And she's a robot. Um, so she's, she's posing in real clothes. Actually, Gucci and Chanel send her her stuff. She goes to real festivals. She was at Coachella. And, um, and she is a, a robot, and she's not shy about being a robot, because at all her pictures it says that she's a robot. Um, so maybe um, we are at this point where um, the whole virtual world starts taking care of itself. Um, so we made it, and now maybe we can withdraw, or either we can disappear into it. Um, wars are being fought out by machines, and the whole uh, internet is being regulated by machines. Um, we will see what that does to our identity, in a way, in the event that we are having tonight. We're having uh, two uh, very special artists here. Um, Dawa Dijkstra, welcome. Yeah, you may applaud. I mean, it's a small audience, but still, yeah. <laughs> and Ries de Porter, here, welcome. Um, Dao Dijkstra is a former impact uh, artist in residence and he worked with Dries uh, on a, a project that you will hear uh, a lot about later on. First about both of their works and then about the new work that they produced for the Netherlands Film Festival, which starts next week. Um, their installation is um, uh, part of the interactive exhibition at the Netherlands Film Festival and um, uh, I think it's already nominated. Is that all the works that are in the exhibition, no. Okay, it'll be nominated, don't worry. Uh, for a Gouden Kalf. Since, uh, I think, th since three, four years, the Netherlands Film Festival has a uh, Gouden Kalf for virtual uh, projects. Um, my name is Sascha Bronwasser. I'm a journalist and author, a moderator, and what have you, um, with a special interest in art and film. And I knew Dao's work, uh, but I didn't know Dries' work, so this was nice, a nice event for me as well. Um, I might sit down because I have a, a bit of a leg problem. It, I might be good as a green screen, actually. Yeah. Um, first, uh, I would like to ask Dao Dijkstra to tell us a bit more about his work. Um, he, uh, and I'll introduce him to you, he's an artist, makes video work, makes short films, installations, and maybe you know uh, Demontable, it was shown in almost any festival around the world, has uh, got many nominations and some prizes. Um, and currently his work, One of Us, is a projection in uh, Leeuwarden on a 39 meter high tower, the Oldenhoven Tower, and there is, his work is to be seen almost every night until this, the end of this week. Um, Dawa, please. Yeah, I'll just give it to you, and um, you will... There is another microphone, but... No, no, we can yeah. alternate. We can alternate. Yeah, well, first, maybe uh, just start your presentation. Uh, because uh, I have some questions for you, both of you, but let's do that once we get to know uh, yeah, your sure. work. Okay, yeah. that one. Um, good evening, welcome. Thanks for coming through this shitty weather to, uh, to see us. Um, yeah, I'd like to give a short presentation on, uh, on my work uh, and, and also how it's connected to the project uh, I'm doing now with Dries. Um, Problem I have is that my work, uh, you know, my work is film, so it takes time, and I only have 15 minutes. But I'll try to, to make uh, to 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 um, to work with this in uh, excerpts. Um, but um, both uh, um, technically and topic-wise, my work 
Um, or uh, I, I must say the, the, the techniques that I use in my work have a lot to do with the topics that I make work about because my work is often about uh, media and how media creates a mixture of uh, realities. And, um, uh, and also these uh, methods or techniques that I use are a way of um, creating something in a very organic, non-scripted way. So I like to, to come to my work sometimes with a big uh, detour, so to speak. And um, uh, first is Demontable. This is the piece um, uh, Sasha just mentioned. And in first, it, it, it wasn't actually a regular film. It was a video installation on three screens uh, with no beginning and end. Uh, uh, lasted 16 minutes. And um, later, I edited this footage after. So this video installation was completely finished. And then I re-edited this um, to a film that is fit for one screen. Um, so this became a film that was, it was a weird film in a way, a film that I would never have made if I, if I, if I started out uh, making it using a, uh, a script or, or, or a fixed idea. And I'll show you uh, a part of it. And I hope I can fast forward a bit. So um, I can also just let it play while I talk. For um, yeah, and in, in this work, I I really wanted to make something. Uh, well, it, I, I I won't go into details about the topics of the work. I I hope it speaks for itself. But it's about the the clash of of news media and uh, um, well daily life and um, um, uh, this. Um, this piece was made like with the with the door of my studio closed. I I, I wanted to do everything uh, within the walls of my studio. I play every character myself. Uh, it, it's all made on one uh, table, and in a way, this relates to to the installation I'm making now with Dries. But we'll come to that uh, much later. Um, but what I uh, do a lot in my work, I use a lot of uh, green screen, and um, so hardly ever a shot is is finished when i when i film something i most of the time i film a part of a puzzle so i can i can go and play with this material later and and use it in different ways and um and i like to go back and forth between execution and idea so i have an idea and i try it on in my studio and then immediately i hope this will be yeah, so here I am, you know, still with this paint on my face, and I'm trying out this footage. So I'm going back and forth between filming, editing, um, as quickly as possible, and yeah, that's the way I, I like to work. Uh, then I'll skip this next film and go straight to Green Screen Gringo. I can make it five minutes longer, right? I can. Um, and this film is, in a way, it's the opposite of Demontable because I wanted to use the same techniques of 
of of gathering parts of a, of of, of uh, collecting parts of a puzzle, but really uh, be outgoing. So I went, uh, I set out to make a documentary in the streets of Sao Paulo in Brazil, where I um, used a mobile green screen to collect people and places, and um, I made a film about Brazil. I'll show you an excerpt. <laughs> to finish with a short excerpt of the um, making of of the same film higher now more to your right yeah that's perfect a little lower. More. More. Yeah, yeah, it's good, it's good. Recorta ele, aí a gente pode colocar aqui no lugar. Ah, tá. Porque. A ideia é tipo fazer um trocadilho. Tipo, pegar um guarda de São Paulo, guarda normal, botar ele aqui, colocar ele aqui olhando o mar, tá ligado? Tipo, olhando o pessoal. E ele lá, tipo, na avenida, assim, na estrada, tipo, olhando os carros. A gente vai fazer uns com tudo, cachorro, com tudo, um projeto. Aí vamos ver se dá uma filmando a mulher pescando aqui, vai que a mulher pescando e vai contar. Coisas do asfalto. Do asfalto, né? É. é a ideia.
cidade de São Paulo com seus prédios imensos, com suas constelações, com suas partes todas. Yeah, so um, that's that. Um, yeah, well, I mean, this is uh, all very self-explanatory, and um, I hope. Um, but I, I really like to make collages out of out of different um, different things, different realities, and I did this in my studio and um, alone with only staged footage, and I tried to do this with um, a documentary way of film making um, well and this project but we'll come to that later leads to something that that includes the same techniques but then uses an interactive part um, as well and I think that's uh, that's it yeah thank you um, yeah. thank you um, now, seeing your work already from these two uh, works, you can you can guess that you're not you're not secretive about what the way you work. I mean, there's no way you try to hide your your tricks. Actually, you show all the tricks in the in the book, either in the film or in the making of. That's very easy to find. Why do you do that? Yeah, well, because I think um, I I try to use these techniques in a way that also has a meaning on its own. So it's not about only creating the image using these techniques, you know, which is usually the, the case, and you really try to, to hide all the smoke and mirrors to create a convincing image. But for me, it's interesting to show, for example, in Demontable, I show myself on this green screen uh, or blue screen dressed up as a soldier because it adds to the story that I am, I am recreating something that is very, um, very distant from me. Uh, as, as a filmmaker. And in Green Screen Gringo, I, I think it's also important because I'm making a, well, documentary. Well, so, some people say this is not a documentary anymore because you're manipulating too much. But uh, I, well, I, I disagree because I think in documentaries, manipulation is everywhere, even, even, also, uh, even without green screen. And, and I'm honest about it. So if you watch the film twice, you can perfectly tell what is fake and what is real. And it shows me as a, it, yeah, it again shows my perspective. I think that's the, that's the answer to it. And can you tell us how, when you start working on such a work, so anything you show it and you know it, anything is possible. You can, yeah, on a small scale, more yeah. or less, because you can, yeah. you, it's not perfect, but it's almost perfect. Yeah. And the many things uh, that, well, the first time I saw the green screen film, green screen gringo, I thought that the girl was actually in the museum, and then only yeah. after the making of, or yeah. I started towards the end of the film, I started puzzling the whole thing back mm -hmm. together. Um, how does it work when you are making it? Is there a you go? You went to Sao Paulo. Let's take that example, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you're going to use that technique, but. Why, then, then other things happen that are documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a political situation, yeah. there are things happening on the street. How do you um, make that into a film then? Do you, do you plan it or do you, uh, does well, every day give you new information to, to yeah, work with? Yeah, every day gives you new information, but it is, a, I mean, I, I, of course, I, I, set, I, I went there with a plan, but the plan, my plan was to make this kind of universal film about big city life or something and and it turned out to be a film that was very specifically about Brazil uh, but um, I mean I really like to go you know back and forth between very open working very openly and 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 working from from chaos in a way and reflecting on that all the time so if I'm I'm, I'm collecting people in the street but already in the back of my head I'm I'm thinking, you know, maybe there's a story in the, in in this one, or maybe I can can combine this. And there were also collections. I was making collections of certain people that uh, I was collecting similar ones. You collecting types? Yeah, like well, not archetypes, but um, yeah. So I don't know. It's yeah, and then it ev and then it, uh, it evolves as you go. And uh, and but in a way, it was also a maddening experience with green screen gringo because there were too many possibilities mm -hmm. because i could edit this film in 
so many different ways, not only in time, but also in layers. I could put everybody everywhere. But then, uh, you know... Uh, what, what became then a guiding principle? Well, the narrative of the, the political situation became a gu guiding principle. And that was? Because that's already yeah, two so while I was, ago? While, yeah, while I was editing the film, the president of Brazil was impeached. She was put out of office and a new president um, came into power, who is still there, but they have elections next month, actually. Um, and then a lot of the stuff that I had been collecting, which was about minorities and the diversity you, you, you find in Brazil, it, it made a lot of sense to connect this to the, to the representation in, in politics. And then, well, you build some scenes around that, and then the, and you go from there. But it's, it's a very open process, but... And you mentioned the word collage, mm -hmm. which is actually which is So it's almost like it's like the old-fashioned collage. All the, everything's on the table. You yeah, shift but it. you know, with this, uh, you have to be very... Or I was very conscious to be careful about... Because you can do a lot of stuff for effect, you know? It can be very funny to put this goat here and there, or it, it can be spectacular to put all these people, I don't know, you you always have to think about the reason why you do it, and also uh, in this film, I think re restrain, restrainment, or how do you say, re being restrained was very important, not to overdo it, and always, you know, make sh making sure it makes sense, yeah. Um, before we go first to Dries again, I'm, I'm looking at the audience. Maybe there's someone who has a question already for Dawa now. And if not, yes. Um, I was I was actually wondering how do you see, let's say, the, uh, on the one hand, some parts are very humorous, and um, do you let's say uh, give priority to the humor or to let's say that we that you encourage the viewer to a critical position. Or how do you see the relation of humor and ideal yeah. means for? Uh, well, I mean, for me, humor is 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 in in the details, and I I really I mean it's 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 also my own enjoyment in in making it, and um, I think it is more a way of of getting people in into it, and then this the second thing you mentioned is more important, but. I mean, for Demontable, for example, the best compliment I got for the film was when people thought it was funny, but then when they read the, the, the underlying message, they were feeling uncomfortable to, to, um, to think it was funny, to laugh about it. They were unsure, like, you know, it is funny, but it's actually really uh, fucked up or sad, you know? So that I think this mixed feeling is... Uh, yeah, that was that was the best thing that uh, that it can evoke. I think. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, now. Welcome. Um, now I would like to Dries to uh, appear. to appear. Yes, and um, uh, Dries the porter. What's what, what puzzled me? No, what I found really interesting that he studied ele studied electronics for six years before before going to art school. Probably everybody starts about that. But uh, anyhow, I thought it was a nice background. Um, he studied at the Kask in Ghent, media arts, and an artist, and he calls himself also a freelance concept provider, um, makes media installations that reflect on the, the online and offline world. Um, he has now a solo show going on, in fact, until tomorrow, is it? Yeah. At the MU in Eindhoven. So now you're going to, you know what you're you're up to tomorrow on the next rainy day Eindhoven is your goal um, Dries I would yes. just go ahead and uh, okay uh, I got 25 minutes so let's set the clock um, yeah I'm Dries de Porter I'm from Belgium and I see myself as a media artist uh, my work is about privacy surveillance uh, and social media and um, I have a background in an electronics and I studied media arts in Kask and Ghent and I worked two years, two years as a concept provider for advertising. But since three years, I'm a full-time full, full artist. And when I was a student, um, media arts, um, I was working a lot about privacy. 
Uh, actually, if you have a question, you can just ask it during the presentation. We're a, we're a small group, so uh, that can work. So uh, when I was a student, I worked a lot about privacy. And uh, one of the works that I made was called 24hoursoundwave.com. And it's before I made this website, I had a weird a uh, sound recorder with me for 24 hours and it recorded my whole day, like conversations with my girlfriend, my mom. Uh, uh, that day I also went to uh, a party. So it recorded, I had a, so, a audio file of 24 hours and I put it online on this website, 24hourssoundwave.com. So you can listen back to everything except I removed some parts out of the audio files, like like that conversation with my girlfriend, a conversation with my mom was also deleted. And you can listen to it, but you can buy it. And the price you pay for it is the same as how I feel about it. So you have files from five euro to more than 500 euro. So, uh, and you can only buy it once, so you had a, um, yeah, you had you can do everything with this file. Uh, so yeah, this was actually I had three other projects about myself where I shared personal information. Uh, but after those four projects, and when I was a student, I was like getting into problems a lot because I shared sometimes also pers uh, personal inf per personal information uh, about my friends. And then I started doing more. I was still interested in privacy, and as did experiments and projects around uh, social media. And the first one is called Tinderin. I made it three years ago and it looks like this. And it exists out of photo frames. And uh, each photo frame exists out of two profile pictures of the same person. One is from Tinder and the other one is from LinkedIn. And uh, I didn't ask for permission. I just placed it online on my website and on my social media. Uh, and a day later, I got half a million views on the project page and got uh, featured at Wired, uh, Days and Confused, Fast Company, and I end up with, again, like many problems. Also, lawyers did, uh, um, did uh, an art articles about this. Um, I also got fired because of this project a month later. Um, so... I was working for an advertising company and uh, my job there I was a concept provider. That's someone that comes up with IDs and tries to sell them for the clients. And actually I was also like uh, making a lot of stuff for my own and they didn't like it that I didn't talk about this ID uh, in, uh, in meetings. So yeah, and uh, they say like you're more passionate about what you're doing with your art than working for advertising. So they fired me after a month after this project. Uh, also one really interesting uh, article is this. Uh, this guy that write this, that did this article, um, he Google image searched every person that I used. So he knows the name. Then he did the interview with the people I used. So they know about what I'm doing, so they suddenly uh, with their two profile pictures, one like sometimes, yeah, like really like in a bikini and uh, and uh, and then suit next to each other. Uh, but at the end, I, uh, I didn't end up with too many problems or financially. But then this is really one of my favorite articles. It was uh, I think Metro and Metro, and they talk about this project like re in a really bad way and then they use a selfie of mine without asking uh, permission also. <laughs> and then so I made this project and then a year later uh, LG launched this sprint campaign. Like they stole the concept, they did exactly the same. Uh, like also the design is uh, almost the same. Uh, they use stock images and it's to promote a new uh, uh, um, photo camera. And uh, yeah, they also won an uh, award with, uh, with this prize. So, and I was not in the credits. So, and it's, uh, someone at Twitter, someone, someone at Twitter said like, okay, uh, this is uh, your idea and it's now a print campaign of LG. So I sent the advertising agency that come up with this ID uh, an email with an invoice of 10,000 euro to use my ID. And, uh, 
and I put, published this also on social media, and I didn't expect them to pay me the 10,000 euro, but uh, the creative director blocked me on Twitter and on Instagram. So in a way, they reacted it. After this, uh, after I was fired after this project, I decided to go full-time working as a, an artist. So I started making installations, and again, a lot about privacy, but I was getting more interested in surveillance. And I use a lot of uh, unprotected cameras that are connected to the internet. So not a camera on your uh, laptop, but like uh, public spaces. And in this installation, it's called Jaywalking. It exists out of three screens and three red buttons. Ah, here are the black buttons. And you can, um, on the screens you see live, surveillance cameras that are pointed to crossroads and I made software to detect if people are jaywalking so if they're crossing a road when when it's red if it detects a jaywalker you get this question would you like to report the jaywalker as a visitor you can then press the button the red or black button and then uh, you send an email to the closest police station uh, around the camera so you can uh, and then the email looks like this. Hi, somebody just jaywalked at, and then you have the address uh, of the camera, bye. And now in my solo exhibition in MU, I uh, made like a following project about this. And it's a wall of 22 meters uh, with all jaywalkers from all over the world. And you can buy each photo frame. And the price you pay for each photo frame is the same as the fine in that country. So the money doesn't go to the police, it goes to me. And this is uh, uh, a jaywalker in Russia. Uh, I think, I don't know, I don't remember the country, but uh, it's around 250 euro. So on the, on the wall you have uh, the prizes also. Uh, yes, this is jaywalking frames. Uh, Seattle crime camps is an installation. It looks like this and uh, it's about Seattle, and Seattle shares a lot of uh, shares a lot of data. And uh, what the police does there is share they share the location where the police is going to. And in this installation, it shows all the unsecured, all the unprotected cameras around the location of where the police is going to. And you also hear live police radio. So actually, it tries to show you a real-time crime in Seattle. And uh, yeah, after those, all those projects, um, I, I start doing like more internet projects also. Uh, uh, and one is, oh, sorry, whoops. Okay, one is uh, Scratchy Kits, and it's uh, a Scratchy Kit that you can buy on an online shop. And uh, you can win up to 25,000 fake followers for your Instagram and uh, Twitter account. So it actually works. Um, there's a lot of companies that sell uh, scratchy kits. And then later I made a vending machine where you can buy uh, those scratchy kits for one euro. This is my online shop. And uh, also I make games. And one is uh, punchmoney.gallery and I made a little video about this. In 2012, Andrew Shannon seriously damaged a Claude Monet masterpiece hanging in the National Gallery of Ireland by punching it in front of stunned art lovers. In December 2014, the story made international headlines again as he was sentenced to five years in prison for his actions. This shocking act of violence drew mixed reactions on the internet. While most agreed that attacks on artwork were terrible, some felt strangely attracted to this surprising and unusual incident. We have to admit, we shared this fascination. Introducing punchamonet.gallery, a browser-based 3D game where you can virtually punch a Monet painting. Visitors find themselves in a gallery space similar to the National Gallery of Ireland. Players are given two controls, moving and punching, so they can walk up to the virtual Monet and punch it until it's completely destroyed. As the painting is repeatedly punched, a running tally adds up the dollar value of the damage being done. The simulation clearly struck a nerve on the internet. 
Tens of thousands of people chose to experiment with violence against art, resulting in a total of 200,000 players after the first week. More than 50,000 people shared the project on social media. For some, virtually punching a priceless artwork was cathartic, a chance to explore a taboo behavior without doing any real damage. The project was featured on a number of important creative and art outlets, and by prominent gaming websites such as Kotaku, Killscreen, and Game Trailers. Try it now at punchamonet.gallery. So actually why, why I make this stuff is, uh, is to try, I try to get viral sometimes and uh, just actually to promote myself and just for fun. Uh, like another idea is non views. I made it in a few hours and it's actually a Chrome plugin that uh, replaces the amount of YouTube views and the amount of people that didn't watch the movie. Uh, in, the on, uh, in the world, so it checks first how many people that are on, uh, on the world, and that mine is the amount of people that watch the video. Uh, and a few months ago, I made an app, and it's called uh, Die With Me. Um, and it's an app which you can only use when you have less than 5% battery on your phone. If you have less than 5% battery on your phone, you can use the app and then you end up in a chat room with other people having less than 5% battery. It's one euro and uh, I also made a little video about this. Everyone knows the struggle of a dying phone. Die With Me is an app you can only use when you have less than 5% battery. Die together in a chat room on your way to offline peace. Die With Me is now available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. So yeah, this was a trailer of Die With Me. Actually, I can talk hours about this because we had a lot of problems with Apple uh, to get it in the Apple App Store. They also called us about our app, and we were more than two weeks the number one and the most as the most paid app in the U.S. Uh, those are big pictures. But BBC write about us, like every major. A lot of YouTubers did also review about our uh, app. Um, all the major. Uh, uh, Blogs did a, a tech blogs did a, an uh, an article about this. Also, Wall Street Journal. Uh, this is uh, we on their number one. <laughs> and then after a few weeks, uh, people and companies started to comp copy our app. Like this is the first copy that get in the Google Play Store. So they uh, they actually made so they copied the 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 concept. The design is different than this copy. But they um, they had ads in the in the the chat room, so they also make money with uh, with their app. <laughs> I sent those guys uh, actually, yeah, it's a guy, and uh, I sent him an email like uh, like a really serious email, like uh, hey, uh, um, if you don't please uh, shut it down, uh, remove it from the Google Play Store, otherwise I will send you my legal team. Uh, in, uh, and make sure you have to pay, blah, blah, blah. Like, it looks really serious. Actually, I don't have a legal team, it just was just to make uh, fun or to make them scare. And uh, then they changed the name from Die With Me, now Live With Me. It's still in the Google Play Store, but now, I, uh, actually, I don't care anymore. This is another co uh, copy of a company. It's like, this is, the design is totally the same. And then there, and there's another guy, this is a, a guy from London, he made this uh, copy, and it's called Alive With Me, and it's uh, actually the same, but you can use it only when you have more than 95%. <laughs> so that's a bit weird. And then there's uh, uh, another, like this is a copy, but I, it's uh, between Die With Me and uh, Tinder, in, uh, Tinder, sorry. And uh, yeah, and also in Mu, I made a, a neon lamp about uh, the app. And there is a screen on the the left, and there you can see always uh, the chat room and see people starting to talk to each other in the chat room. So it's a public chat room. You chat with, uh, and you can see each other's ba battery status also. Uh, this is a project that I released a few weeks ago. It's called Airbnb Host Auto Line. And it uh, yeah, uses data from Airbnb. I'm super wondered that they didn't shut 
uh, our web website down, but it still works. So it's a browser game, and uh, you see one Airbnb room, and you need to guess the host of the room, uh, the get the, the yeah the the host of the room, the owner of the room. So um, yeah, you can click on the owners, and then you can see if you're uh, right or wrong. And it uses all the data from uh, Airbnb servers, and you can also play it with data from uh, different cities. Um, so that's uh, Airbnb host. Um, maybe to finish. Mm -hmm. Yes, this one surveillance paparazzi. It's actually this is a bit uh, in, uh, how I get it up with the ID. I found this service of uh, Microsoft. And actually, you can send in uh, an image, and then I can say which uh, celebrity is in the image. So I use this. I was like, huh, why are people using this? Uh, what are our applications for this? So I made this. It's like a box full of computers and screens. And it checks a lot of surveillance cameras all over the world uh, to find celebrities in images. And yeah, the piece is called Surveillance Paparazzi. So I try to find. Uh, yeah, celebrities. Um, and this is a bit, yeah, the video. Um, and then, oh yeah. This is also at MU. It's called uh, Phase Detected. Did you ever find one? Yeah, actually, it finds every day one, one celebrity, but it's a lookalike. So it, the, the algorithm detects, uh, hey, this is a celebrity, but it's someone that really looks like it. Um, do you want to see results? No, actually, I'm using a, the servers of Microsoft, and they exist out of the databases. More than more than 200,000 celebrities are in the database, but that didn't make uh, uh, that algorithm or the, this database. So those are a few results. On the on this side, you see uh, the surveillance uh, picture of the surveillance cam, and uh, on the right, you see a Wikipedia page. Uh, the, the image of the Wikipedia page of the celebrity. My favorite is this one. <laughs> so you see how that it actually really works. And um, my dream with this project is that I can sell a picture for money uh, to, uh, to a magazine. Uh, and yeah, and uh, actually, a few, de maybe detail, but I select a lot of cameras that are in Hollywood. <laughs> I just think there are more celebrities there to. Uh, and then made this also a few months ago. It's called Phase Detected, and it ex actually exists out of uh, tables with uh, how do you say clay and uh, clay. yeah okay. <laughs> so yeah, it actually it exists out of uh, uh, clay, and uh, I invited nine artists to make a face, and there's a camera on the f on the, the, the clay. Uh, to detect faces, and wait, this is a better picture. So the artist here is uh, making a, a face, and when the computer finds a face, it says like stop. So it really, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it really tests out how fa uh, face detection works. Uh, actually, those are then the, the results after uh, uh, I invited the nine artists. And then maybe to finish off this presentation, I'm working on a lot of new pieces. And one is a, a dating website. And it's a dating website that you, you don't need to fill in anything. So you don't need to fill in your first name, last name. You don't need to upload a, a profile picture. But you need to upload uh, your browser history. And it makes a match between someone else's browser history. Uh, this is yeah, a new uh, dating website that I'm working on. And also, a big project is inverted flag. Uh, it's a, a flag outside, and it goes against the wind. Uh, so it works with wind pressure in the pole of the flag, and uh, blows it in, in, the, in the other direction. So yeah, this was it. Thank you for listening. Maybe the inverted flag is like symptomatic of what you do. You invert. You start by thinking, what is, what is this phenomenon? What and how do I start from the opposite? Or that's what, how I 
get and this ID or is that general? how it works for you? Ah, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's really difficult uh, to make. <laughs> I'm working with a few product designers on this, but um, it's like a, for me when this piece is finished, it's like a, a new direction of what I'm doing. Uh, normally, it's about social media, privacy, surveillance, and this is like totally something different. But uh, um, are you fed up with that? Sorry? Are you uh, have, do you have enough? Of social media and uh, no, 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 it just uh, how I uh, just I really like when you look to my project. There are most of the time different mediums, or uh, uh, so I like to to uh, different like change. It's really strange that they fired you because there's so many good ideas coming, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like as if it's nothing. Um, I was wondering, uh, one reoccurring um, theme is that you. Um, you try to push someone to do something that is a bit out of the, um, mm. a bit illegal. Like in jaywalking? Bit, yeah. <coughs> um, is that uh, because you're, you, you like that idea or is that because the possibilities are there? Yeah, just uh, actually I made it first that it automatically sends an email to uh, to the police, so there was no interaction between uh, between the, the visitor of the exhibition, uh, and then I shared the ID with some friends, and they say like, "Hey, uh, you need to in implement this." And that's actually because of <laughs> uh, yeah, my friends, and I didn't th thought about it uh, like to to make the button. <laughs> no, it's just it's not only in that project, like in the the first project that you showed with the, uh, your own information. You kind of push people to buy something that mm -hmm. mm, that's too private. Uh, so you're constantly trying to push people to uh, be more voyeuristic than they actually would like to. Or uh, mm -hmm. where does that come from? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I thought maybe because the possibilities are growing to do that. Mm. Uh, is that pushing you to uh, to see where the boundaries are for us, or? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, also, yeah, I don't have an answer on this. Okay. Difficult one. Um, another thing that I read was nice, uh, and you said it also on the phone. You said, I'd like an idea to be explainable in two sentences. My mm -hmm. mom has to understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my friends. But first, your mom and your friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's uh, because I don't have... Um, uh, my family doesn't have like an um, background in arts or something, and uh, just yeah, they need to understand what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they have a totally they doing something totally different what I'm doing. And uh, I will yeah, I love it that my mom understands my work. Like she doesn't know anything about. So she has a phone, but uh, uh, yeah, she does nothing about it. But she understands that with me, and I think that's. For me, really, yeah, it's important. Yeah. It's not as a sort of protest because many no. projects in this field are, are yeah, yeah, yeah. on a level that is only understandable mm -hmm. for people yeah, that yeah. are really involved. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of my work is also like uh, shared on Twitter, or like they, yeah, it's for me important that you can share it easily. Um, and I see a lot of artists working around privacy that it, like you have to write, you have to read two books to understand. This installation, and I think it's really like a bit boring. Um, so, yeah. Um, another thing that keeps on coming back is that there's always sort of a business model in, <laughs> in each product, uh, project. And, and how, how is it going money wise? Are you <laughs> Do you want to see my uh, bank account? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, <if can>. you, <laughs> I would like to. <laughs> no, but are you making any money out of it? Yeah, it's. So. <laughs> So it's working. Yeah, yeah, it's worked for yeah. me, of course. Good. Um, is there anyone who has a question now for Dries? Yes? So do you have uh, the, the five steps to virality? Because you seem to be very good at it. Um, <laughs> no, I don't have five steps. Can you, can you predict? Yeah. <laughs> no, I expected, I expected it would die with me. And it ha happened, but I also expected it with uh, Airbnb hosts, but it was not a really good su uh, success. So uh, I don't have. Uh, I think if you have, 
if you can predict it, then you have uh, something. But uh, no, I can't predict it for sure not. But sometimes it's a piece. So sometimes a piece is made for uh, the internet, and that's the, where I hope to get uh, viral. And then sometimes it's really made for an exhibition, um, like jaywalking. It never went viral on the internet, but it went well, really good on uh, in exhibitions in Netherlands, Belgium, Europe. Uh, but on the internet, not a lot of people shared it. <laughs> it's popular by, uh, with curators, but not on the internet. Well, that's uh, some of the five steps to going viral, <laughs> and then five steps away from the exhibitions, like two worlds. Mm. But somehow you you managed to, to cross that boundary to do it in both. In some projects, it really works, both online and, and, and in, in exhibitions as well. Um, I was I started out by telling that you had a background and you you mentioned it as well in electronics. Um, I can imagine that that's handy because you can mm -hmm. make any kind of material. But does it help you uh, content-wise also? Because you you started out art school with a, a, a different background, mm -hmm. so a different attitude, I presume. Yeah, is that so? Yeah, that's, I was like feeling really strange when I arrived in the, the, the art school. Actually, in electronics, I missed a bit like creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, everything has to be, uh, you have a lot of rules and you can. And um, I missed a bit of creativity and started in this art school. And they all studied all art, so that was a bit of a, of a yeah, different mindsets. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it helped me a lot to, to yeah. To, uh, and actually, it, it helped me also a lot to not stu study art before. Mm -hmm. So in my class, there were a lot of uh, people, that, students that already know um, art history. I didn't know anything about it. I was actually also not interested in art mm -hmm. history. Uh, so, but it, it helped me because I was thinking differently uh, uh, because of my background. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think now before we have a short break, but before um, oh, there's a question. Yes. One question maybe. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was wondering a lot about your motivations to make your work. If it's political, oh, sorry. Uh, your motivations, um, whether it's political or just wanting to turn things upside down. But maybe let's ask ask you this question: Are you uh, excited or worried about the current developments in our digital society? Uh, actually, I don't. Uh, I answer with this. I try to do all those experiments and projects to answer all those questions. Uh, so actually, I don't talk about a lot about this. Uh, I just make stuff and and uh, and and. Uh, do you do it out out of excitement or about concern? Huh. Okay. So if I look to the future, positive or negative? Like. Uh, uh, hmm. Uh, I don't know. I uh, I'd also uh, on my website. So I, d I don't answer on this question. I don't have an answer for you. Uh, uh, but like how I explain my project on my website and talks, I don't want to. Um, it needs to be each piece ne needs to be uh, understand. You need to understand it quite easily. Uh, and then <laughs> I don't talk about uh, what you, I think, I hope with most of my projects you, you, it raises questions, but I don't answer them. I, can, I understand your question, like all the projects with your own privacy, I mean, they could, it's possible that they started from a personal irritation with that privacy is, is becoming such a, an item or such, a, or is that not the case? It's not our, so why do you do that? Is that because you you don't do not like the way it's it's developing today, or is that not a, a thing that's on your mind? Mm, uh, most of my inspiration actually comes from uh, uh, like um, software documentations or new uh, like this Microsoft uh, celebrity detection, uh, and this is mo most of the time a spark to make a project. Yeah. Okay. I thought there was another question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now before. Okay, Rana. I'm just 
I've just one one brief remark, uh, not really a question, but you were talking about the inverted flag at the end, and it was still a work in progress. And I was immediately reminded of a Hitchcock movie, Foreign Correspondent, because it starts with the very same idea. Hitchcock had the idea that at one point the main protagonist would see, uh, that, that's why it would be set in Holland, there would be a windmill and that it went the other way. And that uh, he didn't know what story it would become, but the starting point seemed very similar to the oh, inverted wow. flag. So. <laughs> so maybe it's something to develop or whatever, oh, wow. but nice. anyway. Cool. Okay. I actually have something yeah? to say. Uh, we have, like, in, uh, after the break, we talk about the project we were making at Doha, but I made a little uh, test here. Yeah. And I'll explain it uh, during the break. Yeah, or maybe um, you explain it after, but first, uh, but we'll only tell how it works and you can try it. And then after the break, you will know what it's, what, how it's used. Maybe that's the better. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, but the thing, there was a camera there. Where, yeah. Okay, so we need um, five volunteers, actually. And to encourage you, um, we have five uh, drink uh, consumptie bonnen. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I know it's not a big audience, but there should be five people. I would do it. Want yeah, I want you now. Okay. Um, the first five, yes. Okay, two, yes, two, three, four, yeah. Okay, and let's, yeah, okay. And who goes first, you? Because you, you said yes first, yes, okay. Uh, the biggest drink, uh, that depend, that, that's for up, for negotiation at the bar. Um, Dries, what do they have to do? Yes, so it's uh, easy. I use actually the same buttons for the jaywalking installation, mm -hmm. but th this time it doesn't send an email to the closest police station or of yourself, but it takes a picture of you. So you look to the camera, press the button, takes a picture, it will appear on the screen, and it makes uh, um, 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 checks the emotion of your face. Yeah. And what we try to do when you get a, how to get a ticket or a drink ticket is to be sad. So on the top, the word sad had to be. Uh, so look in the picture, look sad. As sad as possible. Think about something really yeah. And then... That's, that's your currency, your sadness. Actually, a minute to set it up. Sorry. You can practice your, your sadness. If I can just restart it with <coughs> I need a thirty seconds. <laughs> you know the, the jaywalking, did you did you invent that? Just because we have 30 seconds. Um, did you invent it before the Chinese started projecting uh, no. all this jaywalking? No, that was uh, before. That you did that before? Yes. Uh, you uh, yeah, and then a lot of, of course, it was on, uh, happening in, the, in the China. Yeah. And then a lot of those articles of a few did uh, also talk about, uh, about my piece. Okay. But I think, of course, they were, all, they were already working. I didn't invent, invent uh, something. It was, <laughs> I'm not working for Chinese people, but... Uh. <laughs> I don't know if, you, if you've seen that, that people are being photographed and then projected uh, on the street, actually. I think the photo stays up for a long time until they pay the fine or something. Yeah, say, if, yeah. if it doesn't recognize you yeah. by name, then it will uh, show it on a website. And that's it. And only if you pay it, it disappears. Okay, okay so actually, picture can be taken. A bit like here, I guess. Probably I'm smiling now. It will uh, hopefully appear. Ah, it takes like a, I don't know, 30 seconds or something. Can she already take the second one? Or uh, no, when, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be alone. It takes only. Yeah, probably it's take, it takes the middle one, but uh, now it's probably mine because I'm happy and uh, male, and I have and much older than you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it guesses me between 35 and. Uh, but it's, it's measuring me. I think it's me <laughs> because it says it it's really be. good at uh, guessing. Yeah, you can try. Away. I think you have to I'll be a bit closer. Uh, much closer. Much closer. Yeah, much closer. Much closer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Back to me, I've been kissing the camera. <laughs> you won't get a break. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people died today. Think of little things. Yeah. I'm on my side. Don't be so morbid, Dawa. <laughs> Yeah, and now we have to wait and see. All, but the next, all your next one can come up. So. And yes. Yeah. Maybe you have to uh, think about something. How <laughs> 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 uh, you Yeah, he says uh, male. <laughs> Why did you get these algorithms? <laughs> <laughs> male. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ne next one. Yeah. <laughs> but bravo for being the first. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. Takes it a bit later, so uh, you press and then. <laughs> now I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do people not see themselves, or is that we also Oh! Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Congrats. Yes. Yes. And um, maybe also interesting to say is the percentage you see is the percentage of the, the algorithm that is sure, the, the confidence number. Mm. Uh, confidence is what is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, what, did, what are you thinking about? Oh, no, nothing really. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone cry? And, uh, oh, the other end. Oh, it's also <laughs> sad. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Before we uh, can, before we have a look at the project that you developed for the Netherlands Film Festival, can you tell us how you how you met? Oh, ooh. on Tinder. On, <laughs> on Tinder, yeah. No, no. LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, I think it was in uh, Rotterdam, right? Yeah. We, uh, ah, it's working. Yeah, we, uh, I, we both collaborated in a project for Studio Mama Gallery in Rotterdam, and they did a kind of site-specific project in the super weird. In the, yeah, it was a weird thing to make something in the neighborhood of Bospolder in Rotterdam. Yeah, and, and we both made a different piece, but we were together in the, you know, you, you got together to talk mm -hmm. about the projects and about your work. And, and yeah. what is, what binds you? What is your common ground? Mm. Humor, I guess, in yeah, our humor project. Humor is a common ground, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very interested in these, for all the things that I do don't do myself, you know, so for all the things that don't bind mm -hmm. us. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of stuff where I'm not good in it, in it like making videos, uh, is though really good in. And I think it's like you're, uh, in the, and uh, how do you say this? The, yeah. Um, technology using sensors, buttons, mm -hmm. technology. Uh, that's, yeah. Uh, not my cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when, uh, when you, uh, was this your, your own idea to, to do this then? For uh, Yeah, well, yeah, so it came together with, um, also with the festival and the interactive exhibition. And uh, I mean, I, I'm very interested in making an interactive, or to think about a possibility of making an interactive piece, but it's not something I can do. Mm -hmm. And... Um, well, and it made, made a lot of sense. I mean, when I was thinking about in, artists that make interactive work to collaborate with, with this project, it was only 
uh, one that I wanted to uh, work with that was Dries, and luckily yeah. said yes. So, yeah. Okay, let's yeah. see uh, how this marriage uh, works out. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, please tell us more about the project and what is actually happening there. Okay. okay. Yes. Can I have my screen? I mean, this, this part of the presentation will be more, um, how do you say, um, chaotic as, as it is, uh, as unfinished as the work is. But um, here we go. Where is my, oh, this is Dries' laptop. Yes, this is mine. Oh, it's just a um, laptop. It's just a ah. very <laughs> beginner mistake. <laughs> it's the cable. It should work now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we also looked at your, or at some of your um, Facebook um, pages of the, the people that uh, um, uh, made themselves um, appear on the event, on the Facebook event. And yeah, maybe I can talk a bit about this. So this is uh, the software uh, actually, yeah, we're showing uh, all the, 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 the Facebook profile pictures of the people that are here. Uh, this is also a work that is in, uh, in uh, my solo exhibition. I have a huge screen in the middle of the solo tentoonstelling where you can see your picture when you're, when you're there, your profile picture. And here we did a bit the same, but we um, did them uh, do, uh, yeah, we uh, analyze them automatically. And it's a service of uh, Amazon. Um, that so you yeah we just uploaded the pictures and then you can see a bit of how, what it already can detect. This is me a few weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> I, what does it say actually? Not smiling, fifty four percent sure. I was on holiday and I'm not happy. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, is did we show already someone that is here? Yeah, Arion. Yeah. Okay. She's here. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, most most people that that say that they come to an event on Facebook, they, they don't. They, they don't, don't come. No. She's here. Mm -hmm. Does not have mm -hmm. a mustache. Ninety nine point nine eight. Okay. It's pretty accurate, I guess. Yeah, yeah so we um, talked about, well, Dries introduced me to this uh, technique and um, came up with the starting point of, um, of a photo booth, and which will be the main part or the, uh, of the installation. And um, actually, um, uh, unlike me, Dries doesn't really like to show making of um, images of his work, you know, what's behind the scenes. But uh, I, you know, I, for me, this is already very interesting. This is what's appearing on his uh, computer most of the time. And also this uh, photo booth uh, we bought, it's, um, it's, it's of the type you see at train stations in the, in the Netherlands. And um, I mean, I, I, I like to mention this because I, for me, this is very interesting because Dries is a, uh, uh, trying to uh, program all these parts that uh, of this photo booth. So here you see a, a money bill scanner, and this is a coin. Um, how do you say? Validator. Co coin validator, who are all connected to these kind of things. And um, yeah, so here this is the bill, um, uh, the bill uh, thing, and the coin thing, who look like this on the on the back, um, to try and. Um, well, not hack is not the right word, I guess, but to to uh, tune to tune this photo booth for our own uh, use, which is <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, actually, the project is called Long Faces, and uh, yeah, so we bought this photo booth. Uh, there's a few stuff still inside. Are trying to use. And uh, actually, can it will work as a photo booth our project? 
but there's something really uh, strange at, in the photo booth. You can take pictures, but you can only take sad pictures with it. So that's why we had this setup here. Uh, you had, we ask you to, to um, look sad, and that will, the photo booth will do it also, will ask you to look sad. And then if, it, if you look sad, you can print the picture, but it will ask you another question. It will say like, hey, uh, you can pay, you can have the photo, you can pay one euro, and then you can uh, have the, your sad picture printed out. But you can also have it for free, and then it will upload it to website longfaces.club. And there you will see all people with, uh, yeah, sad people. Uh, one of the taglines of our project is be sad together. So it's also, uh, so this is the photo booth and with the, with the, with the website longfaces.club. In the future, we will make a social media platform, really simple social media platform, where you can also upload a, pic a picture of yourself on the website. And uh, yeah, only sad pictures will uh, 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 show in, uh, on, on this uh, website, longfaces.club. But, but, yeah. but in this booth, it's also, I mean, it only accepts sad pictures, but you can try again after you took the picture to look more sad. And the sadder you look, the, the cheaper the, the, cheaper the yeah, picture is. Yeah, the cheaper they are. Uh, yeah. And um, I'll just show, let's see here. Oh no, sorry, wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said with the chaotic presentation. So, um, and then next to the photo booth is the other part of this piece, which is a collection of scenes I am making. It's a film, basically, that uses the pictures from the photo booth as, um, as part of the, well, as part of, part of the collages, part of the scenes. So I am, working on a lot of different scenes that uh, play with um, the culture of taking selfies with social media and they all use the sad faces coming out of the long faces um, booth and um, I will show you some some scenes and excerpts but uh, you're privileged to to look at uh, unfinished uh, unfinished uh, uh, stuff also this is the trailer and it also has um, how do you say uh, graphic design, which is also uh, the first version. And uh, in many of these clips, you see a face, which is a placeholder. And actually, this face I used as a placeholder is a, an average face. It's an, an average German face, uh, composed out of 75 German male faces. So I thought maybe that's a good placeholder. So I kind of every, peop every person that... Um, that fits that that takes a picture in this booth who actually fit in, in, in what I'm doing. I got got back to uh, I had I had this idea or I, I just decided just as in Demontable I'll play everything myself but uh, this is this is a scene that looks a lot like Demontable with the soldiers and everything and but most scenes have um, a lot of different things uh, and actually Demontable had no women you know I was playing only men and then I thought you know I can ask someone if I if I need a woman character for this to ask uh, a friend to do this, but I, I really want to work in this same 
fashion that I described earlier, where I do everything myself and uh, go back and forth between this idea and execution. So I thought, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a woman, anything, I'll just dress up as, uh, as such. And uh, this is, for example, a scene about Tinder. And um, so I'm editing these uh, women that are swiped to the, to the left. Normally you don't show this, uh, like, you, you, you told me that you uh, are not, that you feel a bit weird to show this footage, right? To show this? Yeah, no. like, are you okay? <laughs> I, even, I even posted this on Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't mind. But um, yeah, actually, I mean, it, it is interesting, but that's a whole other story, how many people responded to this. I posted this on Instagram, and then, like, you know, like, there's a lot of, oh, you know, you did your nails, and I don't know, it was, but for me, it's, it's not about that, maybe, maybe it is for, but I just, this is just a compositing of a scene here, you see me falling, and then I, I act as if some, something else falls on top of me, which is the next, uh, the next woman that is behind it. So this is, oh no, this is actually the, the original take, which you see how, how ridiculous it looks. But after editing it, oh yeah, this is another take. So the, um, and they, you know, they, they fit on top of each other. So because I acted here that someone falls on top of me, the other one falls and, and they kind of, and I repeat this, uh, this process until there's a whole bunch of, um, of women. And, and uh, yeah, and I worked for all the backgrounds. I'm working with scale models um, because it's fast and because I create them, can create them in my studio um, easily. Um, this is a restaurant. And this is, an, uh, this is the unfinished shot, but so here, this will be, well, you, you can tell, this will be a face of the, um, out of, coming out of the food. And, um, I, I, so I thought of scenes that also fit the, the idea of showing multiple portraits after another. So this will all be different, um, different faces. Uh, and here is also, oh yeah, here's also a waiter coming, and he, um, uh, yeah, this is all Instagram food. This is just by you have these hashtags, you know, like. Food porn or porn or food gasm, uh, and you get this kind of stuff, which is the meal he is finding. So you take a picture of that. And it stops at the omelet. Um, and actually, a lot of scenes um, in the film are set in a museum. still need to add some explosions to this scene it doesn't have enough it doesn't have enough uh, explosions yet I mean, actually um, this is uh, Dries didn't talk about this project he did uh, that kind of inspired me for this scene which is uh, called um, trophy camera and it's a camera that has, in, in itself, it has all the world press photos that won, in, that won, that were, that won an award. Yeah. And you can take pictures with this camera, but it only saves the picture if it's uh, more than 70%. If it looks, if it looks 90% as a world press photo, yeah. it saves it and uploads it to a website. Exactly. So, but here, this, this selfie-taking soldier is um, shot eventually. But, uh, it's a good thing we have war uh, photographers. 
who will also have faces, of course, sad faces, all of them. Oh, this is, by the way, an average German female face. And here you can see it's very unfinished because you just saw my face. And I'll really make sure <laughs> I really make sure that will never happen in the installation. But so then there you have this world press photos in a museum, and then she will she wants of course to take a picture of the selfie taking picture that was in the world press photo, and the supposed will tell her that it's not allowed to take pictures in the museum. Um, and uh, yeah, there will, there's also kinetic uh, installations made out of um, made out of uh, faces from the booth. And um, yeah, this one, this is a kinetic installation that throws paint. No, <laughs> the supposed also doesn't have a head yet. Um, yeah, so it's all these kind of scenes, and uh, um, wait, I want to show, oh yeah, this one. We try to walk on high heels. So this will have a very, very different look when it's um, uh, when it all are different faces. Um, oh, here I am in my studio. Um, oh, yes. And to show you, I I I took the I took the the faces from Facebook. Um, put them in so you have an idea. Sorry guys. <laughs> Arion is busy. Yeah. But the beauty of the photo booth is that every photo will be exactly the same light, the same color. You know, these are all very different and someone had a very pinkish uh, weird profile picture. Um, but you get you get the idea. Um, yeah, I'll just show two more excerpts that I made. Yeah, this is <laughs> making off. I won't show this like this, but it um, gives you an idea also. And it's like first I tried to just act as if there were lips, but it's really impossible to to use lipstick on a flat surface. Oh, here is Sasha, and here is Pauline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um... Is there any algorithm that determines which face is going where, or are you discriminating between one face and the other? Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, first we will we'll get to this to work with just female and male faces. But um, yeah, so that that's you know the first goal. But the possibilities are are endless, really. Yeah. So it's also like an automated render. For yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's an automated render. Yeah. So it re-renders the videos automatically when there are new pictures, and then um, you know, you'll see yourself appear in the in the films. And how are you going to decide if the piece is ready? I mean, when the Friday is the opening. Are you guys still here tweaking old switches and, or is it like I mean, now it's locked and this will be it for the rest of the week or? Well, I don't know about the programming, but the, the film, yes. I mean, there will be, but I, but I do consider it as a first version because it really, um, I mean, there's so many ideas on this that I didn't have, to, that we both did, didn't have time to realize because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just very, it's beautiful what you can do with this. So I and it's also the format is is really suitable to add stuff later or remove scenes or 
play into into I don't know something else that will happen in the future. You know, it's not a so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Will be fixed as well, or are you going to tweak? Yes, it will be presented Friday on a, in a, uh, as a, fr a finished piece. Uh, but of course, there's like a lot of uh, possibilities that uh, that sparks us to update it, like the, yeah. especially the video. I think though. Really wants to make more videos, and uh, mm. if it show, if it will show it in a, in an uh, other exhibition. But it, I mean, not it's it's not that. And Arjen mentioned this, but it's not that longer is better. I mean, right now this film will be ten minutes, looping in the ten minute thing. But you can, I mean, you can think of uh, ways of, of randomizing this it so it's not the same ever. I mean, now it is. I I, I did think of an order of scenes, so there is kind of a narrative in it. That is has a, has also an ending that connects to the beginning again. So, but um, yeah. Do, do people know when they when they have their picture taken? Do they know that they can upload it to your work or partake in in this? But they do not know what it looks like. So, what kind of film they will be in? No, but I mean, uh, I prefer not to tell. But they the the film is in the same exhibition space as the photo booth. So okay, you. Okay. So you. I mean, you so know. if you. Yeah. If you think a little bit, then you might suspect something. I'm just wondering if you might get in trouble. Because uh, um, if people get their picture taken and are being mm. put in a, in a funny war scene. But the film is not online. I mean, you, you also don't get into trouble if you show up in a mirror, right? If the mirror is in the same space. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's just a very complicated mirror. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, you it's can not. react yeah. to that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But using uh, Amazon Cloud Service, right? Mm -hmm. So are these? Do we need that? We don't need that, right? You need yes, that okay, for, the for the camera. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're using a uh, Amazon Cloud Services, which means that the pictures are updated to their service. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys agreeing on the use and that their images then used to train Amazon's algorithm yeah. as well? Very good question. So actually, how it technically works is... I didn't know this, Dries. Yes, I, I told him. Uh, so, yeah, too yeah. late, too so late. So the, um, the, 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 the phase detection and everything happens at Amazon servers. So it uploads it to an Amazon server. They have a great, I think, one of the best services to analyze faces. So it's on their but server. You know that that's the best but because everyone their, uploads their pictures to them, Yeah, right? but they, uh, they also uh, they explain, but I can check it, but uh, they explain they delete all uh, the, uh, the footage you upload to their servers. So yeah. how, how do they... Who knows? Th their, their algorithms aren't trained on your delivered data They don't sets. talk how they trained their algorithms. They don't, they're not transparent about this. About the service I'm using, so. So they, d but they they're training with material from you from, and then they delete it, but you're not sure. S yeah, so they train those algorithms with a lot of pictures, like the how to detect the sad faces that you give it a neural network with a lot of sad faces, and you say like, hey, they, those are sad faces, uh, and then it will find a pattern in all those. Uh, pictures, but they don't train the neural network with pictures you using. You're uploading. Mm -hmm. The question is sometimes: Okay, I upload a picture to their servers of Amazon. Do they delete it? Do they? Uh, uh, you don't know this, but they they say they uh, delete all those pictures you're uploading. But mm -hmm. who knows? So there should be a really big disclaimer in small letters on the booth. Yeah, we can do this. Yeah. <laughs> you feel that they don't train the algorithms with your face? I mean, it seems only logic to me that they would... Because they... To tr to tr yeah, good question. To train a neural network, you need to be sure. So sometimes we tested it here. So sometimes it's not quite... Sometimes it's like, like happy, but the picture is really sad. They need to know that it's for real. The, 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 your training data set needs to be... Uh, Accurate yeah. needs to be all set pictures, otherwise you. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm thinking they don't train on my data. You think? Not sure yeah, yeah. 
Or is um, it something that you prefer, maybe you're playing also with, because you know that people are, can be quite fussy about it when they're in a museum space, but at home they upload whatever mm -hmm. to wherever, uh, not minding about or not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Is that also something you, you think about or play with? What? I think this is a detail of the project. I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's more about social, yeah, about... Well, giving away your information is, a, is an essential part of the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I mean, it, it, I, yeah, it's funny that I didn't notice. I mean, I don't mind, but it sparks <laughs> a lot of questions that it, that it goes outside of the exhibition space. I mean, that is something... I mean, I think, you know, you can do, you can do different things when it's inside the walls of an exhibition space than when it goes out. But, um, I mean, if it is, in a way, only to analyze it on, on, on this big, fast supercomputer that I'm imagining now, I don't know, <laughs> then uh, I guess that's, uh, that's okay. Mm, yeah. Maybe it's just bottom line. I guess that's okay. It's more or less how we all treat our, our data. And yeah, but I have to <laughs> Friday to think about it. So okay. I can still guess it, you know. Yeah. No, but, uh, but I, yeah. I guess there's no way back now. I mean, but it, but it is it is yeah. true. I, I saw that you have this. You now have these devices, right, where you can talk that you can talk to. Uh, Amazon has one as well. Apple has one. The, I don't know what they're called. They're this like, eh? Alexa. Uh -huh. Yeah, Alexa, for example, and you can talk to them and you know make them order food or uh, you can talk to them to put on some music. But they uh, already did some tests on it that these things are constantly listening to you and sharing a lot of what you're doing in your house with all these companies that are connected to these devices. And I mean, they are the most next level private robot listeners. Is, yeah. there, is there something in your, uh, I mean, there is a storyline more or less in mm -hmm. your film. Is that also playing with these aspects or? Yeah, I, well, I mean, a lot of the, the images I, the scenes that I try to create, they, they are expressing some, some feeling I have with, with these things or absurdity. Um, I also imagined all these scenes with sad faces. I mean, these are not sad faces now, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I c so you will have a museum full of sad faces with people walking around looking at it that also have sad faces and... Um, well, it's like a counter, um, the counter tegengif for uh, the whole online happy world. Yeah, it is, it is. I mean, you can, it's hard to find someone, especially, you know, that takes a picture of him or herself looking sad. It's, mm -hmm. it's a rare thing. Yeah. You're looking at smiling people all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, that, I, that is the basis, a basic, but and it's also very, in, just, uh, what I also like is just the simplicity of, I think it's also can be just very interesting to look at sad faces. Mm -hmm. just, just, just like that, just look at the sad human being. I mean, that's, I mean, it can well, be that's one of the bigger statements that is behind the work, is that the sad face is like almost wiped out, it's not... Yeah, it's not I mean, very it, it is, you know... Out, out, of, uh, out yeah. of television, out of faces mm -hmm. we see, I mean, it's, you're obliged to be happy, be happy and, yeah. and uh, happy and uplifting. And, and if you're sad, you sh should you see a therapist to fix it, right? Yeah. Um, see that we're running a bit late. Um, are there more uh, questions? Yeah. Can I just stop? Yeah. Sure. I saw in your presentation that you're going a little bit far with your examples, like for example the refugee crisis, the war scenes, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure what kind of other scenes are going to come. My, um, one of my questions is how far are you going to go? And but what, what, what do you think is far? Um, what at, do you mean by that? At the that? moment for me, uh, the line between entertainment and criticality is very blurred, and mm -hmm. for, for me at the moment the work is way more on the side of entertainment than criticality. Yeah. Um, is it, with is all it? the respect to, to everything, but it's maybe also because it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just curious, um, what kind of impact would you like to create with your work? Because le right now we're just talking about showing yeah. these funny examples, everyone is laughing and... Yeah. No, but I mean, I understand it, it is not, I mean, there's serious topics in it, but... Um, I, 
You know, for me, like for example, you know, this, this soldier running around doing the Snapchat filters on his face in this war zone, I mean, it is, it is also funny, funny, but it is for me also the, like a, a portrait of, that is very close to what, what you, like the mix of things that you see on social media. I mean, it is not, um, yeah, I it's understand. It's not that absurd for me. Yeah, and I understand. And yeah. I think I kind of got it much more in this war scene because also what happened in the past with pictures of real soldiers being online. Mm -hmm. um, but for example, with the refugee crisis, I think it's maybe a little bit the other way around because the uh, scenes that you recreated are pictures that were taking of photographers taking taking pictures of those refugees. So no, not them, so they taking pictures of themselves. I'm, I'm not sure if you get what I mean. Yeah, 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 I get what I, you mean, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I was just wondering, what's your story? Yeah, I mean, I, I did think about this with the refugee one, and I also thought that I was, I'm not sure about the, um, because in the background of this refugee picture, I put these piles of um, yeah, life vests, yeah. which is this iconic picture of the refugee crisis, of yeah. course. And before I added this background, they, they kind of refer to refugees, but they also looked like, I don't know, like sail, a bunch of sailors or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I, I'm th still thinking about these pictures and like, uh, how do you say this, uh, you know, uh, like it, sh it shouldn't be too much this. And uh, I like when it's close to these, you know, when it refers to refugees, but not so, not so explicit, yeah, the ambiguity, that's exactly it. And maybe, I, and I was, I'm still unsure about this background that I put in because it, I put it in to just really make sure like that you're thinking about, uh, you know, Mediterranean refugee crisis. Is that something that you discuss among the both of you or? Uh, yeah, we, we, you talked about it. Like, because yeah. uh, as we saw, you are constantly pushing a bit further than so. But maybe uh, that's yeah, the explained. Uh, that I always try to be um, just a bit, little bit under the the boundary, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, um, but uh, yeah, that was uh, we discussed about this, and I was not sure about it. But then, yeah, explain though, explain it to me. Uh, but yeah, that's really good feedback that we get here. Mm -hmm. But we discuss uh, the videos, but not not everything, not all the details. Yeah. And I have one more question, if I may ask. Sure. What is the motivation for me to, to go to this photo booth and take my sad face for your project? Really good question. Um, uh, to, wh why do people go to a normal photo booth? Well, do you think? normally I, I, I need a pass photo for uh, my passport. Mm -hmm. That's when I go, but um, why would I go to yours? Yeah, it's a very good question. Do you have an answer on this, though? No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I also like the idea, I have to be careful. Um, I mean, I, you th I think a lot of people that are, have, have this m maybe more banal motivation of doing it, like, you know, there's this thing and it can do something, I want to try it, you know? I th but, um, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's, um, or is it it's because it's taking a picture is like a it's an almost a natural thing to do now. But so I, why not do it in I, an? I think the, I think actually to answer your question, the motivation it's it will be always placed in a public sp uh, not in a public space. It will always be placed in an exhibition. Uh, environment. Artistic context, yeah. Yeah, in an artistically yeah. context. So that's, I guess, you want to try the piece or try the, and it will you think, okay, is this a normal photo booth? Or, uh, uh, so I think that's a bit, is that an answer on your question? Or, uh, like, it motivates people because it's an uh, exhibition space and you want to try it out? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But I also think that oh, there is also some audience. Sorry, I'm going to finish after no, this. No, no, go ahead. No, it's <laughs> interesting, yes. Yeah. Uh, there is also a lot of critical audience going to uh, our museums oh. and oh. Uh, festivals. And um, I think, I, I, or at least a lot of people that I surround myself with, we are thinking about these questions that we mm. raised today here. Um, and uh, I would think twice if I would go to your photo booth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe maybe people at the stations wouldn't think about it that much if you would place that photo booth in yeah. the actual context of a train station, but especially in the artistic context, I would think. About oh, but it. I I expect people to do that, and I mean they're I mean they're happy to not use yes. it, right? Maybe it's the whole point of the whole a, installation. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I was thinking yeah. about that work. Maybe you heard about it in the Gogbot uh, uh, Go Go uh, exhibition that's that's just closed, and there was a uh, also. S very simple, similar photo booth. There's the picture uh, of a still of a decapitating video. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And the the face of the beheaded to be beheaded person is taken out. You can put your face through and have your picture taken. Um, that was huge um, uh, protest from people, there were also many people doing that. And the mayor of Enschede, where the festival took place, decided that it had to stay. Uh, exactly because of that, that um, trigger to a critical, or to an audience going to that kind of festival is critical. And um, is um, stimulated to think about what it is, in fact, being critical or being engaged. And the artist herself made the, I thought that was really nice, she said, well, we, they all, we all walk around with the Je suis Charlie. No one has a problem putting that t-shirt. So what if you really put yourself in the place, not only uh, as a symbol with the t-shirt, but literally you put yourself in the place of, that, of a victim. Well, that's what you get then, then it becomes entertainment. I thought it was really interesting, and maybe not defining Yes, it is critical, or it's humorous, but it's exactly that strange space where you're suddenly doing something that is maybe against everything you would ever thought you yeah, would do. This, I mean, this work, uh, I also saw it, and it also works when there's no one in it. Yeah. You know, when you see this thing, it is a picture with a hole, and you see this, this uh, image of, the, of this uh, guy almost going to behead someone, and... Uh, with our piece, it is different because we do need the, in a way, we yeah, need the Yeah, but you concept. can see from your image, it, it already works with the generic image of the average yeah, I mean, German. It, yeah, maybe maybe it should have, um, yeah, that is interesting thought, that it could have the generic, that like an obvious placeholder, and this photo booth, so then you can also view the work without participating, and you can, mm -hmm. like, like you could look at this picture of yeah. the piece you mentioned with the hole. Hmm. Well, anyway, yeah, anyway. You, you still have a week, only a week, um, maybe to to an open uh, <laughs> night, um, and we have to close this evening. But I would like to know what was um, when collaborating. Obviously, that worked really well. There's a lot of fun. There's a lot of um, challenge also. And and um, what was the biggest surprise for both of you in working together? The the new element that you got out of it. Actually, we don't work a lot in the same space. So we are a lot, I live in Belgium, Ghent. And um, yeah, we're always on, a, uh, yeah, chatting to each other. On, uh, but the new things, well, Does it change yeah. your work from, mm. do you think? Well, I mean, I, for me it does to, to think about this, you know, you, you if you're introduced to this kind of possibilities, they, they become a part of your creative process, even though I cannot realize them myself. When I now have new ideas, I'm thinking, this, this is possible, maybe I should, you know, I, I, I will have to collaborate with someone, but that's really, I really like this idea, you know, that they become part of your, I mean, uh, the, this, the, all these things that Dries uh, does and makes, really makes me feel like very old-fashioned uh, artist in, in a good way, you know, but, like... Uh, um, I think for I think maybe it's uh, also normally I think in my own skill set my ideas are in my own skill set. Now my skill set is a bit more. I'm working together with someone. I know what it always capable of. So that can I can come up with more ideas or we can I can do yeah. It's like a, what I uh, like a puzzle. Uh, yeah. My skill set is now. It's extended. Extended, yeah. yeah. That's a good word. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think we're looking forward to, to see it or to uh, participate or criticize it. <laughs> um, or sue you, maybe, for using our sad faces. Um,
I uh, want to thank you and thank Impact for this event. Mm. And if there's anything more you want to ask, then please go ahead, but then it's in private. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.